Well, hello there. It is I. Uh, we are going to be carrying on with what we started last week, which was the UI, so user interface in Unreal. Uh, I'm hoping my project works fine. I tried booting it and everything last night and make sure that things work. Um, so we're probably going to come some teething issues because I reformatted my computer yesterday. So, uh, but I've tried building from here. I've tried making sure I've got the right stuff. So we'll see a lot of it. We're not we're using Visual Studio anyway, but I upgraded to Visual Studio 2019 as well. Thought I'd give it a go. Um, I might be encouraged to move to that in work. I'm on 2017 in work as well. So, um, so it'd be good to get used to that. But yeah, let's have a look at what we did last time, shall we? So we press play in here it might be very loud normally unreal is um let me preemptively turn down the um unreal here let's just go 20 shall we okay thank you so oh i realize i've made these windows so big that i can't see the play button You can still see play there, although we want to. Oh, yeah, we were doing it in a new editor window, so that's not that's fine. So it pops up. So we had this title screen where we've just got some picture and then we had some buttons which allowed us to change some of the settings. If you remember, we go into options and then we have these different settings in here. We can change the size of the window if we wanted to. And then we could quit the game if we wanted to in that way, or you could press start and it would take us through to a level and what we also made is the this HUD on this screen so you can see when I shoot the ammo counter at the top right is going down and you'll notice that if I jump my energy goes down as well it's not very robust we haven't it's not about getting how we control the the energy changing it's about how we communicate to the UI in this uh, this month's challenge so uh, and the other thing I think we put a debug thing in to lose health or R to reload but what was to if I press F, it takes my health down as well. So yeah, they're, they're the little things that we had a look at last time. Uh, and I we're going to try and carry on. We're following some tutorials, and my plan is to continue with those at the moment. So um, we did the main menu, and we're now going to have a look at how to do this pause menu and see the way that it recommends doing that. Um, so uh, create a script. Up. Uh, create and script a pause menu for your games. That's what we're looking to do. So open your pause your pause menu blueprint widget. So we made some of these preemptively last stream. So if we go into our would it just be in widgets? Yeah, pause menu. There we go. Let's grab this. Check that up here. And we'll try and go through step by step of what it says to do. I might move this over. So I can just uh, read it out and we'll find you. I've got to resize it so I can still see chat. Um, you may already have played it, Uno. It won't be my, well, I mean, I've worked on it. It doesn't make it my game. But um, I did a tiny, tiny amount for one AAA game, which is less, less well received. It's still, it's like, it was still a good game. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's just like, it has got a massive following and, um, but then I work on a currently live AAA game as well. I can't tell you, Uno. That's the that's the thing. I can't tell you. You know the rules. Well, they're not rules. They're my own rules, but still. Now, we are going to make sure we turn off all these bloody tutorials as well, because I've just done a fresh install. No, go away. Exit. No, I don't want to... <laughs> I can't tell you the genre. No, there's no, it's not a game of clues. Because what comes next is then you just guess games. And it becomes a thing, you know. <laughs> okay. So on the designer tab, we were going to drop in some widgets from the palette into the hierarchy to make the following setup. No, I don't work for Riot Games. <laughs> okay, so we have a canvas panel. Uh, we're going to put in a border. We didn't use one of these last time. Uh, I should explain what it does. And then we have a vertical box, a button, and a button within that vertical box. So it's in panels. We have our little container things, and a vertical box is one of those. 
put that in the border and then we want some buttons with text in them i think the buttons come automatically with text in them don't they no they don't <laughs> my bad that's why you would make up a, a, a widget to to do that for you for example you make your own widgets these are just the, the pre-made ones it is an amazing game what is uh to be honest like i'm super happy that i work on it i know like you guys have definitely heard of it i know that much but, okay so we have one button there and one button here okay so it tells us that here we have a border it contains a vertical box, a text, and two buttons each in the text on the canvas panel. Yes, correct. In the designer, we're going to resize the border so it fills the, the entire dotted window. Okay, so we go on to the border. I don't really know how the border thing works, but yeah, that is indeed filling our window. Can we just make, can we make it fill? Hmm. Like that instead. And then if we put those on zeros, that should properly fill it. And then if we don't want it to fill... We can always then change it back, I guess, after you've done that. You're back to... Oh, did I just do that for... No, no, no. I think I did it for the border, didn't I? Yeah. If I really wanted to, I could then put it back to that and it still fills it correctly. That float precision, yo. Okay, so... um, Leisure suit, Larry. Hey, yes, spacey. Nice work. Oh, tea, tea. Nivan, can I be? I'm doing parky tea. Oh, hang on. Man, I'm testing. I, I missed the, the text. The, uh, at the top here, there's one extra thing that I've missed. So let's just whack that in there. Oops, on top of this. This goes up here. And this is just going to say pause menu. Exciting, this is. What? Let me type in here, please. Thank you. Done. Um, in the designer, resize the border so it fills the entire dotted window. Um, also change the color from the brush color inside the details panel. So let's go again to the border. What does it say borders are used for? A container widget that can contain one child widget, providing an opportunity to surround it with a background image and adjustable padding. Okay. Fair, fair. So let's go and change the brush color. In here. So brush. No, brush, brush. Color. So we're going to set it to be a wonderful shade of hmm. I always struggle with the color picker in Unreal. We want a kind of goldy color. But we're going to take the alpha down a bit as well. Because it's a pause menu. All right, done. Look at this. This looks amazing already. GTA, it's a, the mashup, the, the common mashup between GTA and Final Fantasy. Well done, Uno Maestro. You'll never stop guessing. That's fine. Do you want to? Yeah, I, I don't think we need to center this. I think it's ready to ship this. I agree, Spacey. Let's get it going. Okay, next up, you may want to set the alpha. We've done that. When the pause menu is open during gameplay. It'll fill the screen, but we, it'd be nice to see some translucency. Oh, the pause menu fill in the screen. I don't know how I like that, but we're going to follow the tutorial. The idea is that I can whack through these tutorials the first two weeks and then um, the last two weeks we can play around and, and try and do some cool stuff. And, and Brainoid has been working on some like dialogue manager thing that we're going to look at as well, but at the end of it. So, um, yeah, it's exciting stuff. I think I'd like to look at some transitions, uh, like some animation stuff. But one of the things I'm really interested in as well is the. Um, the flow of like creating your own widgets and binding to events and hooking that up to your code so that's something i want to make sure i have a look at before we wrap up this month too vampire the welsh version no blood just cider hey we drink i think the welsh are more known for drinking beer than cider who know anyway in the border in the details we'll make sure we use full screen i've already done it i'm ahead of you tutorial they just told me to go ahead and use that well ahead of you Vertical box, we want to go ahead and center a line thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So this should center align its contents. Ah, does that really just... Okay. It's made it... I guess that makes sense. It's no longer filling, right? Uh, and 
it's only going to be as wide as it needs to be, the vertical box. If you wanted that to be a certain size, I think you'd wrap it in a sizer. So there's like a size box. There you go. Yeah. And then you can give it a certain width, for example. I think that's what you do. Hello, Pally. Uh, Spacey, uh, Uno is trying to guess what game I work on, even though I told him not to guess. I said, he asked what genre it is. I said, I won't tell you the genre because then you'll just end up guessing. And he's just gone. He's, uh, he just resorted to guessing anyway. Shh, Spacey, I told you that in confidence. Okay, um, center it. Yeah, I've gone ahead and done that. And the text, we're going to write pause menu. I've already done that as well. I jumped ahead. Uh, resume and quit for the text in these. So I'm going to just name my buttons as well. So this is going to be resume button. I like actually starting them with what they are for the sake of... Oh, uh, being able to find things alpha, uh, alphabetically. And also, you don't need to delete the wood button that's already there. Um, button uh, quit. Okay, and in here, we're going to write resume. I remember, we don't really need to do it for the text, because when you rename the text, it says what it says next to it. See how it just changed down there? So that's healthy. Hello there, Lucky Feathers. Uh, Pally, is the what do I have encoding options? Uh, I've had to set up Streamlabs for the first time uh, on this new computer, and I, I think I went through my settings and set them up to what they used to be. Um, video, yeah. So I'm streaming a uh, uh, 1080. So uh, you must have some uh, streaming. You must have uh, options based on your connection. Okay, good, but, uh, oh, connection, all right. Uh, okay, so we've done the resume and we've done the quit. I'm happy with this so far. This is nice and easy, but it's build building my familiarity with using the tools again, because it's been a while. Oh, that that's fair, Pally, that's fair, no problem. Uh, I will read out things for you. I will be your eyes and your ears and your nose. You can smell the sweet scent of cinnamon in the air. Thank you, Merlin. Okay, for the buttons, we want to do our hover effect like before. So remember, you can click on both buttons. We can go into this hovered here. Uh, and last time we made them bright yellow. I think we'll go ahead. We're not trying to make this look great. Um, so it's in the tint we want to do it. We go ahead and put our bright yellow color in. Uh, I do feel that the text should be different color though that white color on that white button is not favorable to me to me mama oh yeah we'll have to uh, we'll look at nine splicing and stuff as well which would be good yeah i know no i'm on it i'm on it don't you worry please don't be my nose <laughs> Uh, I might join this open source project. Uh, uh, what's the open source project? And, and have you done any CPP Lucky Feathers? And have you used Unreal Engine before? Uh, okay, next up, we give them names, but we've also gone ahead and... I think these already are set on these modes. Yeah, they are. Okay, sweet. Okay, so script in the pause menu functionality. This looks like garbage at the moment, hot garbage. We will make this look better afterwards if they don't make it look better. Uh, we will provide. <laughs> no, my straight is silly. Uh, with the visual set, we're going to provide script and functionality for our pause menu. So on the graph in the upper right corner. Widget Blueprint Editor window. So up in this. And then we should have our quit and our resume buttons over here. So we're going to add an event, the on clicked to our button quit there, there it says. That's great. Um, and we'll probably do that for the resume as well, by the looks of it. On clicked. Great, they're both there. So we're going to get our player controller. Again, this this works single-player games. 
Although, actually, no, multiplayer, if this was running on the client, which it w would be if it's UI, the z zero index player uh, controller would be the person playing as well. But I think you'd rely on a more a better way to get hold of the player controller. Uh, imagine you had a split, uh, a split street. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. Sorry, a split screen game with two players locally. That wouldn't work then. This is a cheap way they often do it. I also need to learn Unreal. The project's a fan remake of an old Lord of the Rings. Okay. Oh, sweet. Okay. Um, uh, Unreal is a bit. It's a bit different. Um, but I will. I mean, I can't rec say this is a great way to learn. For sure, but um, I've got what I've gone through in the past. I made some notes on. So there's two things I can share here. Hold on. Where is my? Well, we can have this one. This is a newer thing that I'm putting together over time, and then. There is my, where is it? I think I called it Dan Real Engine. There you go, this as well. So this is how I, uh, the document, I documented the stuff that I looked at when I was learning. I can't guarantee it's the best stuff out there. Look at this, I've done UMG tutorials before, <laughs> but it was almost two years ago now. And I don't do much of it in work, so I'm trying to refresh myself. But I can share this with you. Um, copy the link. There you go. Um... Yeah, I think well, Lucky's just doing something for fun here. It's it's not about making money. Uh, there's that, and if you want, I've done some notes on how to how things work, a bit of an introduction, and some code snippets on various topics. Um, it's it's still being fleshed out as time goes on, but um, yeah, perhaps that would be useful as well. So let's share this. Uh, good luck on your four and a half mile run. No, four and a half, not mile, hour run, you cra you're crazy person. Uh, anyway, so there's a couple of documents there for you. Uh, hopefully that gives you, uh, but join a Discord and ask questions. There's a few of us who use it on there. Uh, CA2, I'm going to, I don't know, like, I think you're just being chatty, but you're being a little bit <laughs> confrontational to some of my regulars. I think you're trying to be funny, but it's just like, I recommend chilling out a little bit. You've been here before, so I don't, I don't, I'm not going to time you out. You've been decent before. I'm just giving some uh, feedback. Okay. Thank you. Uh, where were we? We were going through this. Oh yeah, if you want to know what I'm going through as well, you can just take this. What's that? If that's what I'm going through at the moment. Okay, so we get the play controller and essentially when you click the button, this isn't going to bring up the menu. This is just handling what to do when you do click the buttons. Yeah, the, the downside with um, fa fan-made games as well, if you're doing it on a large IP, is that they could shut it down. But you're not doing it for the you're doing it for the for the project, right? So if it did get shut down, it shouldn't be the end of your world. I think that's one thing I'd recommend when getting into this sort of stuff. So we uh, this is basically when we press resume. So if this pause menu that we just made that looks a bit rubbish at the moment. When we press resume, we want to go back. We want to get out of our UI mode. So we have something called a UI, uh, an input mode that is part, uh, associated with the controller. So we'd want to 
put it back to game mode because when we open this menu, we're going to switch to UI mode. Uh, what else have we got? Um, there's another thing you can do to get rid of the cursor as well. I thought like when you change it to game only, it gets rid of the cursor, but I might be wrong. Um, there's another thing we can run off of this player controller, sorry. So, which is called show mouse cursor. So we're going to set that. It's a, a Boolean. But we're going to be setting it to false. And then we're going to get rid of this, this widget. So we're removing this from his parent. And if you remember last week when we started doing these, you, you basically add these to the, what's it called? The viewport. The viewport is where you add all your widgets. So when you remove it from its parent, that is going to be what uh, dis basically destroys the widget. It's nothing no longer has a reference to it. So I think it gets rid of it and it allows it to be garbage collected to my, something along those lines at least. Okay, so we want to then remove from parent and our reference here is this ourselves here. And then set game pause, which is a general function. Which I've not used before, so you can just pause uh, the game. I imagine that that stops th the ticks from running, so the, the game will pause in the background. So it's no longer paused when we come out of it. Excellent. We're going to want the invert of this when we bring up this menu, but we'll, we'll probably come across that in a short moment. So the quit is going to be quite straightforward, I'd imagine, isn't it? Well, it depends if we go if we load back to the title screen or whether we just exit the application. But, um, okay, moving on from that, we are going to make a new function called remove HUD. So let's go ahead and do this. So we'll use this to remove the HUD from the game's view when we pause. So if you remember our game itself, um, oh, I haven't. Our edit brush color operation. Am I still in an edit brush color? No way am I in an edit brush thing. I haven't still got a window open, have I? No. Save. Let me run now. Can't play in editor when performing edit brush color operation. But, uh, oh, this is unfortunate, isn't it? Okay. Uh, the other thing we did was these buttons, right? Yeah, that's not the brush color, so it would have been the text. Save, compile. Let us run this time. What? This is so ridiculous. Uh, well, what I was going to show you is that we have these HUD elements up the top. And we want to make those hide. Um, so that's what this is going to be doing now. So we'll first off get a reference to our play controller again. A play character, sorry, we need this time. Because the play character um, is what we stored our HUD reference to. Let's open the player character to, to have a little look at that, shall we? Uh, if we go to content, I can't remember which one we made. Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm looking down here, though, and I can't really see. Okay, it would show here. So I think it's just bugged out. So we'll have to have a little, I'll, have, I'll just relaunch it in a sec, it's no, it's no big issue. Hopefully it lets me close it. <laughs> We're not lost forever. Um, but yeah, I want to look at the first person character that we made before. So hold on. Hang on. Blueprint. First person character. This is what we modified last time. And what you can see is here we created this HUD widget and we created a reference to it called cached HUD. So we're going to be accessing that and basically hiding it, I believe. So first off, we need to cast to that blueprint type. So we want to cast it to the first person character. Uh, and following on from that, we're going to go ahead and get our cached HUD. And from that, we can just remove from parent. Oh, so he's actually removing it instead of hiding it. I mean, or she, whoever made this tutorial, sorry. Um, so let's, okay, that's fine. I would have probably hidden it instead, I think, but we'll go ahead. It's okay. I guess you're not pausing that often for it to be creating things. 
So then you're working in a like in a professional capacity. You end up questioning the before I didn't care so much at all, but now I always question like the oh that's not an efficient way to do it, even though in a game that I make is probably not going to make any real difference. Okay, on the event graph, uh, off, uh where are we go? Oh, we're back on the quit now. Okay, so we're going to finish off the quit thing. That that's all this was. Do we need a return node at the end? I always forget with the functions whether you do. I like to do, hmm, maybe it's not a return node. Am I Is that the macros, maybe, I'm thinking? I think macros you can give an output out of as well. I forget. Anyway, let's go back to the event graph, shall we? And we're going to go ahead and we're going to copy this. So if we are going to be quitting, we want to go ahead and show the mouse cursor, and we're going to be... Removing the HUD and then loading our level. So remove HUD, which is the function we just made, didn't we? There we go. Yeah. Does that for us. There's no inputs. That's not a problem. And then we're going to open level and go back to our the name of our first level. Let's just go and verify what that was. Annoyingly, do you have to type it in exactly the same? There's no drop down or anything. Um, it won't be this map. It's within my levels folder folder so we'll probably go back to the title screen you can copy and paste it like that though so go into this then and whack that in there there you go sweet hey are you okay it's a long time are you doing well are you healthy okay so we have our open level and then we'd essentially do the same logic after that though we don't want it to be paused so we can just join these up that makes sense to me Okay. So we're almost at the end of this little tutorial here. So now we need to go ahead and add a way to bring up this uh, this widget that we've made, this pause one, right? So we're going to do this in our first person character. Do we have inputs already? We do. I made some inputs earlier. So we're going to go down via the same way. So it's a keyboard event, I think it comes under. Yeah. Uh, we'll press P for pause. Does that sound reasonable? All the scrolling, there we go. Okay, and essentially we're gonna create the pause menu widget. So um, it's just the, the node is called create widget and then this allows you to choose what class we've made and we've made one called to WBP pause menu, right? So that's what we're gonna be choosing from here. Excellent. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is store a reference to this like before. So we're going to pr probably promote this to a variable. I think that's what they're going to do here. Yeah, they do. So I'm going to call this a cached like I did before. I like to call them cached. You can use whatever naming convention you want. And this is my cached pause menu. It's interesting. We're making it and we're caching it. But then that every time we press P, we're going to... We're going to create it again. And even though we've cached it, we could just hide it. Whatever. We're just going with it. It's fine. I guess really you don't want this widget floating around constantly that you're not going to use. So from that respect, it makes sense. Okay, so um, then what we can do is we can get a reference to this cache pause menu. So let's grab that in. We're going to make sure that this is valid. It's basically doing a null point to check uh, on it. Sorry, that was the wrong is valid. So it's to this one here. So this is like a macro that just goes through and, and checks that it's not equal to null pointer for you. You can double click and look into it if you're interested, but. So. Ah, this is, this is, this is why. Okay, they, later in the tutorial, they go ahead and do this. This is what I was complaining about is if they've already made a pause menu, why make it again? And this is what we're doing here. So we're saying, hey, how about you check? Do we have one? If we don't have one, create one. There we go. That's the sort of healthier logic I'm down with. If we do have one, I imagine we're just going to be showing it. So let's have a look what they do next. Yeah, we're going to do exactly what. Oh, actually, hang on. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this works. Let's have a little, a little look. So I just follow it and then I'll try and make sense of what they've got afterwards. So then we've got another player controller fetcher here. 
This is uh, the if you remember our HUD, our like UI is based on the player controller. Let's see, we can get hold of the HUD from there. Because if you think the user interface, what the player always sees is regardless of what character you're controlling, you might have a different interface based on what character you're controlling. But oh, it did just say welcome to the chat as well. So I don't know if the last thing I don't know if I disconnected. Uh, this is the last thing I saw. So if anyone has said anything else since then, feel free to repeat it. I don't have Twitch open in another window today, so I can't see a backlog of the chat. Okay, um, where were we? Oh, yes. So we got our player controller, and from here, we're going to first do the, the mouse thing. So we set a mouse cursor, a show mouse cursor, sorry. I just said I appreciate that you position your blueprint boxes so the lines are straight. <laughs> there's little shortcuts you can do, and there's actually a, an, an add-on you can get which will make them look good. It really, like, it snaps things for you, which is apparently worth doing, but I always avoided it. There's little shortcuts you can do, like mouse keyboards you can bind. Um, we want to set this a sec. But also you can do things like this. You can select two of them and right click and you've got options in here alignment and then that aligns the middle of this box to the middle of that box in this case that doesn't look nice but we might have uh, align top that takes the top of this to the top of that so yeah you, there's different ways you can do it and if you didn't know you can double click in the middle of a line and you can make one of these which can help you kind of reroute and make things a bit tidier uh, if ever needed Okay, so first thing we're going to do then, we're going to show the mouse cursor because we're going to be bringing up the pause menu. And then we want to go ahead and set the input mode. The UI only and then bring up the pause menu. So from here, set input mode. to UI only because we're going to have the menu open. So the player controller, we can get a reference here. Here's a good example of where you might want to use one of those redirector nodes just so you're not having wires going behind things. The widget to focus here, so we want a reference to our pause menu here, I believe. Again, we might want to re add a little node in here just to keep things a little tidier. And then there's an option of in mouse lock mode. So I think that keeps the mouse where it was when you paused, possibly, I'm not 100%. Um, okay, and then the final thing here is we want to add, obviously, sorry, we haven't even added this to the, the viewport here, have we? And also we want this set to kind of go into here. Hold on one second. Oh, I also need a quick bear if I come on BMO. Okay, way back. I said it wouldn't be long. Okay. 
So, uh, yeah, the thing I forgot to do is that both of these will hook up to the same place. So all those nice wires I made are now going to be made <laughs> ugly again. It's okay, though. So this would end up going into the same spot up here as well. Because we just want to create it. That's all. We still then go ahead and do the same thing. Now, we can move these along a little bit if we want. It's a little bit tidier. We're not going to waste too too much time. So I can see what wire is going to what. That's what I'm interested in doing at the moment. Okay. So, so it says here, when, M uh, when uh, P is pressed, if the pause menu is accessed before, it will not need to be created again, and it will instead access that variable. This is the first time the pause menu has been accessed. It will create it and then store it as a variable so it can access it later. In either case, the input mode is set to UI before we display the pause menu. So to display it, we're going to go ahead and it's funny. But <laughs> Sorry, the tutorial is not very good in the sense that they, they have two screenshots in a row here, right? This and then the next step is this. But then they've gotten rid of this in this step. Can you see it? And they've rearranged their nodes. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah, it's confusing for someone new. I've seen this sort of stuff before, so it's okay. But like, if someone's really new to it, then it's confusing. They're like, oh, why is that gone? I don't think it's good. But anyway, I think when you're doing tutorials, you really want to reduce the ambiguity and confusion because you you got to assume you're going with someone who has no capability and is going to be really happy just to follow every single step and have something working and gain from that experience. I think the moment you leave question marks in there for someone who can't answer questions on their own yet because it's their first time using something, and there's no no there's no fault of that person. Everyone's knew it was something once. Um, it just means that it, 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 people can give up then because they don't feel like they're doing it right. So add to viewport. Oh, uh, I should. It's context-based, right? So I, in this case, this add to viewport, I can either untick that, and then I'll get, I'll be able to find add to viewport in here, like that. Or the other option is you make sure that you're coming from the correct context here. So the context is the pause menu widget we want, right? So here, so we, if we do add to viewport now, you can see that it shows up. So if you haven't seen that sort of stuff before, that's what that is. Uh, we'll try and keep this cleaner again for the sake of anyone new to this being able to see where we're going. Okay. And then the final thing we would want to do here is to pause the game because we've been using that pause game thing. Set game pause. That's one thing you get with uh, Unreal Lucky Feathers is there's so much like built in already. Like all of these nodes I haven't coded, you know. I know this is only blueprint rather than proper code as well, but I mean... Still, there's a lot that you can kind of get done without actually having to to code, which is a, a good, but I also feel a bad thing as well, personally. Okay, so... We're going to test it. I don't know if... Hmm, once you press the... Can you see that the game is paused and the menu appears? Okay, that's the end of that tutorial apparently as well. So it's a little bit bare bones, but... Hey, Windy, how you doing? Nice to have you here. Good morning to you. Happy Sunday. Are you not in church, Windy? Oh, I guess you've got 18 minutes to get there. Oh. Shigeru. It's, it's Shigeru Worship Day, right? Okay, so we should now. <laughs> oh yeah, do you remember? I, I can't launch the game because it, it balked a bit. So let's just make sure we've saved everything, close, and hopefully Unreal will be happier if we um, relaunch this. So this should kick in now saying, oh yeah, I finished. Excellent, let's give that another launch. Well. Let's let's hope you're not standing next to the flammable curtains then, Windy. Uh, how's your day going, dude? Uh, how was your Apexing the other day? I, I miss Apex a bit. I, I I spent a lot of time playing Apex. 
but that was the problem. <laughs> it'd be like after work, instead of doing anything productive, I'd be like, oh, I play Apex now. And then it'd be like, oh, this, oh, yeah, I need to do stuff. I'm running out of time. I've got to go to bed soon. Oh, stress. Oh, I'm wasting my life. I'm 34 and I still I can't do things that normal people do. Ah. So, yeah, I try and try and it's not that I won't play it. It's just I try and do, if I'm going to do games like that, I'll do it like a once a week game night with a couple of mates rather than playing it on my own continually. Time is scarce. You've got no time to get better, mate. You've got to get that GO2 pumping out. Pumping out the game factory. Here we go. All right, here's our, our little UI we've made then. We still have all of this stuff from before, but now if we press play, we should have HUD. And if we press P... We've got our disgusting pause menu. You can see it's it's just frozen a game. I assume it's frozen a game. We'll try and do it in the air, shall we? Hold on. There you go. See, it's frozen it completely. Uh, the mouse is showing. If you remember, we had the 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 logic to show the mouse. The game mode input is UI only, which is why I can't move the camera around. Um, the mouse input is locked to this kind of UI layer. And it won't be passed into the game controllers. That's essentially what it means when you when you're um, setting game input mode to UI only or game only or game both. The, there's an input component system. I talked about it in bit if, a bit. If you remember, I mentioned I brought this document up earlier. So if you go to, I dropped a link in chat. But there's the input component is a bit of a strange old thing, but essentially it, it starts from the player controller, if I remember correctly. Because that's what, like, every, every, when you connect, when a client, if you think of the, each person playing a multiplayer game would be a client, right? Or if you're playing a single player game, you're playing on a client as well. That's what you call, like, the end user program that you're launching. Um, and your main, when you connect to that game, or you start a new game and you load into a map, it makes a player controller. And you get assigned that. Your keyboard, your, your system, your keyboard and mouse and that is inputting to that player controller. And then if you possess a different pawn or uh, like a, that can be a character, it might be a vehicle that can then any input you go through that player controller will be passed through to that character or that pawn or that vehicle or whatever. Um, and so you can set it to handle the inputs differently. So when you press W uh, on, in just the player controller, when you're on the main menu, it might do nothing. But when you possess a character who's like a, has two legs and runs around when you press w it moves forward whereas if you're in a car it might accelerate which is different right so it is, that'll spin wheels around instead of just move a, a, your collision forward so um that's why we have our hud or the, this is how the hud kind of works is that your ui is all on on the player control if you remember we looked earlier at uh let me open up the widget we just made so every time we would get in player controller, let's get player controller, set input game mode only. If you think all of our input is going funneling through this player controller. So when we set this kind of uh, mode here, that means don't pass it on to any pawn that you're possessing at the moment, being your character or your vehicle or whatever. Um, just only send it forward to the UI uh, component, uh, the UI input handlers, essentially. Um, and the set, the vice versa for the opposite one that we did elsewhere, where you set it to, uh, oh, this is the game mode only, so you can set it to the UI only. So yeah, that's generally, I know there's a bit of an overview, but, um, there's a bit more detailed information in here if anyone ever wanted to read about it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's interesting when, uh, you can make a, you can make, if you think of that input coming through the player controller, as I said, and being passed on to other things. Say I, in the player controller, I bound, let's say, escape, and that would bring up the pause menu uh, in the in the main me in the when you're actually playing the game. But if I press escape on the main menu, that might exit the game for me. So that's two different bits of functionality bound to the same uh, the same key. And essentially, you can tell different layers of this input as it passes through. So you go player controller down to the player character. Uh, and various other things that might have input uh, set up on it. And you can choose to, whether it passes down or whether it does something called consuming, which is where if someone has pressed that button, it will stop it being pushed down to lower components that track input. So it, it won't make other things happen as well. So that's a great example. If you've got the UI open and you click, you don't want the, the binding to shoot 
when you click to still happen. You might have it in some games you've played, some like Game Jam games, that when you're in the pause menu, you click to do something, your character still shoots in the background or something. And that's because it's still listening for that input on that layer. So anyway, there's a, there's a bunch of uh, of random input component blabber for you. Do you think UE is better than Unity? Crikey. Uh, I think what I'd really like to answer that with is, have you heard of the, the fine word of Godot? Godot is here for me and you and everyone. Um, just a quickly, before I talk Welsh for Mechanically Dev, uh, I don't think either is better, dude. I know that's the very politically correct answer. Um, I prefer, if I, if I wasn't working in Unreal, I'd prefer Unity. But that's because I'm not making beautiful multiplayer games. Um, uh, Unreal Engine is, it has good out the box visuals for great 3D rendering and lighting and stuff. Uh, I mean, I mean, Unity you can get great looking stuff as well. Don't get me wrong, but it, it's more renowned for it. Uh, and the second thing it does is you kind of have networking kind of out the box with it as well, which is nice. So there's a big old template in Unreal Engine that you use called the Game Framework. And if you, fo if you follow their game framework, you get a lot of stuff for free. Um, all that input stuff that I was just talking about there, that is all done for free. And so if you follow their kind of rules of like, oh, if you want to add new input, you should do it in this way and follow this kind of pattern, then you get a lot of stuff that you don't have to implement yourself. You just use it. Whereas Unity is a bit more from the ground up. You just, you make everything yourself. There is obviously a game framework you're building on as well, but it's it's a bit less... Um, overbearing, I guess, which is a good and a negative thing. I found it very frustrating to begin with. I just wanted to code like I did in uh, Unity, but it is what it is. Um, hello, Fletcher, by the way. Nice to see you. Pally, I'm not sure why you feel validated. Let us know. Flamethrower Unity for 2D, though. I don't know if it's better. Unreal 2D used to be kind of... Uh, well, but that's the thing. That's the kind of thing that people say. Um, it's... I think 2D in Unity is more solid. For sure. But if you're just making a simple game jam game, I think you'd be fine. But um, yeah, Paper 2D is the kind of approach you'd use to it. But anyway, I need to talk Welsh for a minute. Diolch yn fawr i chi am ddefnod i'r gorchym yn Cymraeg Mechanically Dev. Awn i edrych ar um, y dar nesa. So, uh, oh yeah, awn i'n edrych ar hyn. So os ni'n neud resume, mae'n fynd nôl. Ach i'n neud yn y pryd. Awn os ni'n gwasgu ar quit. Mae'n fynd nôl i'r menu yna. Now, os ni'n gwasgu pa yma, chi gallu bod ma'n ddim yn, uh, ar, uh, well, ma'n ddim yn rhoi pause i'r game, yn lle beth sy'n dweud, oh, herwydd does dim gyda ni'r character ar y sgrin yma, i fath ni'n dechrau'r game, ni nawr, rydym dim ni mewn uh, cymeriad yma. So, um, dyma pam mae'n pigol anna rhywun ni'n gwasgu pa i pause. So, ma'n ddim yn digon da, digon da i fi, dwi'n hapus da yna. A ni'n cael lwc bach yn trio gwella sut mae'r peth ma'n edrych, cos ma'n edrych fel rubbish ar y... Ar hyn o bryd. So ni eisiau hynny edrych ti'n fath llai crap. So i wneud yna, bydd rhaid i ni... A, sut allwn ni wneud hyn i edrych yn well? Dyna beth dwi eisiau gwybod ar hyn o bryd. Beth am os dyn ni a cael ein y canol fel hyn hefyd, mae hwnna'n edrych yn well tip yn fach yn barod. Uh, a wn i fath lle cael tip yn fach o, o padding o gwmpas bethau hefyd? So mae'r bod yma yn llenwyr holl screen a wen mae dan i'r vertical box ma. So Yn gynta, sut mae'r padding ma'n gweithio? A wn i gwella hynny i gen a deg yn lle? Dim byd yn digwydd? Na, beth sy'n digwydd yw lan yma? Dwi'n meddwl y bod y arfertical... Na, mae ddim yn... Mae ddim rili yn cael effaith i ddim yn meddwl ar hyn y bryd. Sos yn fynd â hyn nôl? Na, mae ddim yn newid unrhyw beth. Ok, so y byd dyn ni eisiau wneud yw cael rhyw fath o spacing rhwng pethau. So, we are... Beth ges ti frecwast? Uh, ges I had a bowl of oats this morning, Fletcher, with apple and cinnamon. What error I can get if my HDD's power cable is broken? Um, no hard drive detected? It won't know what to boot off, nothing to boot, something to do with booting. Unless this is a joke, it could be a joke. I'm looking forward, if so. All right, we need to, I, basically what I was saying is we want to try and make this look a little bit less rubbish. Um, 
So, like, the, one thing I know you can do, right? You can do spaces. Spaces is a nice way to just separate things out a little bit. So if we add them into this vertical box, we'll add uh, three of them. And then you can whack these between things, and you can give them custom heights. Now, we actually don't need two, uh, three of them, I just realized. So let's say... Uh, the pause menu itself, we want to have a gap of... I hate that it's actual in pixels as well, rather than like a percentage of the screen. I think there may be ways to do that, but I still feels nasty. So if we make that like that, and then these, uh, this spacer here, we'll just we'll give that a 25, half that size, shall we? Okay, it still looks rubbish. But let's make this pause text a little bigger, shall we? So if we were looking to change the font to stuff, um, I think last time, didn't we... Oh, I have no other fonts. Because I, oh, I reformatted my computer. So we've only got one font, people. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. So our pause menu is bigger. But you can see also that these are larger. And that's because we've set these to fill out. So if we want, if we wanted our buttons to not be the same size as that, we could instead set it to this. But then the downside you have is, oh, now they're different sizes, which is rubbish. So, how can you make them be a custom size? There's no options here like you get in Unity, which is a bit ugly. So instead, what you can do, you can wrap them in... I think this is the best way to do it. I don't know for sure. You can wrap it in one of the... If I get rid of this, all of these are what I'm looking for, uh, is what shows when I go wrap with. So you can wrap it with different uh, ones. Uh, what are these called? Widgets, I guess. So we want to wrap it with a... I think a size box is probably what we want. But what we might want to do instead is actually wrap these in their own container, in their own vertical box. So that way they get sized together instead of us relying on doing it. So can we wrap this with a vertical box? Nice. Actually, did that do it? No, it didn't. It only did one of them, I think. Yeah, so we've got to add these in ourselves. Right, now we can make this fill. We can make that fill as well. Our space is filling. And now we just do the settings on this vertical box. So we can wrap this with a size box if we wanted to. And we can give this a custom size then if we wanted to. So if we want to give it a width, you can say, hey, this stuff is going to be uh, 250 pixels. And then it's set to that specific size. In the supposedly English, I uh, know it would be confusing, but that's why it's only a minute. Hopefully, people give me more than a minute. If you, mind you, Brit Britain's got talent. If you're bad, it's 20 seconds. They're giving you those three X's. Crowd are booing at you. Simon Cowell's being nice. You know, something's wrong if that's the case. Hang on. You tell me to get a new PC. Oh, no, you're giving tech advice. Thank you, Windy. <laughs> Black screen and there's a white stick in the top left of the screen. Uh, I mean, that normally you should get something come up on the screen, even without a hard drive, because that's what your motherboard is and the BIOS does. Yardy. So if when you boot it, it doesn't show anything ever, then that sounds like there's an issue with your mobile. Oh, playing Apex one evening. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm not a scumbag, mate. I'll, I'll, show, you, I'll show you something for free, Windy. This is completely for free. Look at this. Absolutely free content right here. These are my hard drives. This is my backup drive. Don't worry about that. Look at this free space. Look at it. When you say Apex, I think, ooh, you're going to make this go up a bit, aren't you? I'm going to have to download 40 gig, aren't I? Just to play with Windy, the egg himself. Um, I, if it's with friends, I can, I can, I can. I'll do you this one favor, Windy. No, uh, I'd enjoy it. I would. I just need to download it. I literally uh, formatted my computer yesterday. So, um, yes, let's do that sometime. It'll remind me of the old days when we played Fortnite with Yagic or the, the, the Sultan himself. The Honest Drive is called the Honest Drive because you stream supported me to buy it. A hundred, uh, one terabyte bloody SSD. I only, I put, put uh, yeah, everyone gave lots of money. It was lovely. So thank you. 
top kick. It was. It was. And I felt... Do you know what I like doing in Fortnite? When I think back to it, uh, Fortnite these days, Windy, right? I feel is... It's all a bit too... There's too many things to it. They've added so many little quirks and special things. I quite like vanilla Fortnite. And, and I don't mean the single player mode, but just how it was. There's nothing wrong with that. And what I used to like to do is just to build a little castle sometimes. Find a place, hope it's going to stay in the ring, and then just build a little house. It's not going to help you. But when someone, when someone runs over that hill and sees that someone's built a little castle... You've just made their day and you've got a little bit of a fight on your hands. It's great. Um, UE4's UI seems a bit more like web design and flex. Yes, completely right, Lucky Feathers. Uh, it's a lot more, uh, yeah, I'd say CSS style where you're, you're filling stuff and you can do things. You can, you can do an auto where it will auto distribute elements. Uh, let, uh, it's hard to show you right now, but if you have one thing in a row and you say auto, it will split the width evenly. Um, in a horizontal box is a good way to show that. But um, but you can you can give them ratios. So if you do choose auto in a horizontal box, you can you can set like what per, not percentage but a ratio that they should fill and stuff. So if you're used to web dev a bit. Yeah, I, I like things nice and simple. I do value my friendships and hard drive space. No, it's just, it's quite nice. I wiped my computer for a good reason. Anyway, I need to get back to what I was doing. You keep talking. I'm going to uh, try and at least make a little bit of progress here. So I still think this looks rubbish. Um, another thing we could have done, instead of putting a size box in here then. So can you, if I delete this, will it remove everything? Replace with child, is that? Ah, oh, brilliant. Oh, that's quite nice, at least. So instead of doing that, what we can do, we can make this fill. Oh, uh, fill that way. But then we can give it some padding. If we don't want it to be exactly that, that's another way to do it, I guess. So here, uh, if you want to do your left and right. Well, let's just say 50. So you could do it that way as well, if you want. And instead of having a spacer, you could probably put padding on the buttons as well, right? So if you if you wanted to avoid doing it that way, if you let's just put the spacer down as one for now, just to give us a an idea of how this works. So if I go on the padding here, oh, that's the text. Sorry. Well, the text we might want to do some padding on the text. Oh, it doesn't let it do both at once. Swine. All right, let's just make this ten, uh, ten and five instead, shall we? You see, it gives us a bit more space around the text. So I did 10 and 5 there. 10 and 5. Sweet. Uh, yeah, so Yardi, could you could you answer? I don't know if you saw what I or heard what I said. Where does it show anything when you turn your computer on? Like you know when you launch a computer and you normally get the it's some like brand and then it it does a bunch of text and then it'll try and load Windows. That BIOS stuff that's not on your computer. That's on the bloody motherboard, right? So that'll help you know is it the motherboard or is it the hard drive? It could be both. <laughs> Yay! Maybe everything shafted, dude, but. It might give you a little bit more of an idea. So what I was trying to do by here, by the way, was set up the the buttons then so that they can follow. They can have a bit of padding. We might want it to the top and bottom as, let's just do 10 on each. Oops. And then that'll give us our spacing too, if we wanted to do it like that. And the only thing about doing it individually is, yeah, you've got to be consistent then, right? However, what you could do is you could make this a widget. So if I want, I think, can you promote it from here? <gasps> you can't. I so normally there's a way you can convert it to convert like things you make in the world to an actual widget. But instead what I could do is I could make this widget in its own widget. And then instead of using the default widgets here, I could use my own one. And that's one thing we're going to be doing. You can see we've got this user created section here. So this is where you can drag in those things. Oh, so you're... Hmm. But the BIOS loads, though. Okay, so yeah, it does sound like your hard drive. Fine. <laughs> Windy. What's your plan for the day, Windy? How's your doggo? Oh, 
Okay, so that's our crappy pause menu anyway. I know it doesn't look great. If we wanted, we could always uh, make this less large as well. So if we wanted to say, we are gonna make this, uh, we, we've filled in that way, right? Yeah, okay, so if we make this 100 in, To be honest, it looks a bit, I've done them the wrong way in my opinion, but let's just say you wanted your pause menu to look like that. You can go ahead and do that. That's no problem. And then when we go in and actually play it and press our pause button, it just feels that much as well. But can you, it hasn't actually got rid of the HUD. Oh, we don't tell it to. We only do that when we quit, right? So let, let's modify it. Let's say we didn't want the HUD showing when you paused, for example. Let's do a little modification. So um, we have a remove HUD already. We made it into a nice little function, which is good. Um, but then I think we might need to add the HUD. Hang on, what is the remove HUD? Yeah, we just delete it pretty much, which is a bit harsh. So we might not use that remove HUD thing. So this we're going to have to go to the blueprint of the character because that's where we handle the logic of um, bringing up that pause menu in the first place here, right? Okay, here. So we're bringing it up, set game pause, and then we'll just add a little custom bit on here. So we want to get a reference to our cached HUD. And then can you set visibility, I think it is? Set visibility, and we're going to make it hidden. The difference between hidden and collapsed is whether it, yeah, it says there, it takes up no space in the layout. So you know how we've been playing around with the layout here and you can see how certain buttons impact things. For example, if I delete this button here, it changes where everything is because it's like a web flow of things. Things are in relation to each other. So that's what the difference between hidden and collapsed is there. Hidden means it will still have a chunk of space there. Collapsed means it will kind of get rid of it and things will shift around. So if you if you don't want things to move around, then it's quite important to make sure you use the right one. Um, so we're going to make it hidden. I think that should be fine. Compile and save that. And then within our pause menu, what we want to do to control the logic is we want to... Enable it again, basically, when we resume. So resume in here. We don't want to remove it, so we we will get. Have we got a hold of our HUD? Oh, we did it in here, didn't we? So we have to do this block here. So let's go back here. Hello, brain. Let's whack this down here for now. We're just doing a tiny little extension to this crappy. We want to set the visibility of this then back to be on. Move all this forward a little bit so things can link up a bit healthier like that. And the visible is now visible. Yes, sorry, the visibility is now visible. Okay, that's what we wanted. Just extended it a tiny little bit. Whack that in there. File save, and hopefully we'll see a little bit of difference then. My plans are thus. Go somewhere for a nice walk. Eat some foods until I collapse. Dog is glorious, thanks. Well, that sounds like a good, a good Sunday for you. Wendy, I'm on a... I don't want to say a health kick because it's not a health kick, but I'm on a like be responsible kick for, for the la this is my seventh day. I think like like our Lord Savior, I might take a day of rest. But um, no, it's I'm getting up early, even on my weekend. So I get up at half six on a weekday, and then seven o'clock yesterday and today, and then I do some stuff in the morning, like I sort breakfast, make sure I clean my kitchen up, and then I go to the gymnasium at eight. I, only, I don't do a, a big workout. I don't get prop. I get a bit, a bit sweaty. I should probably shower, but nothing, nothing to write home about. Just twenty minutes on the bike. I did twenty minutes on the treadmill today, on a run. I did almost three kilometers, and then come home, and then it's good. I've done. I feel good then. I feel like if I don't do anything else, I've done a little bit. I'm not not quite getting shredded, but uh, man, I've been doing good over the last like six months. I lost like over a stone, and then I had a bad. Like three weeks <laughs> and put almost most of that weight back on. So now I'm trying to just negate that again. Uh, 
Is this something like Blueprint Art? Where you make blue yeah, th there's a whole subreddit dedicated to it as well. If you, uh, I can't remember if it's called Blueprint from Hell or so. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway, um, let's see if that works then. Whether we now no longer see our HUD. So we play. Okay, we're shooting. We're jumping. It's so high octane action. We paused. The HUD is gone. Perfect. Resume. The HUD is back. I fell off the map. No. But still, it works. That's what counts.